My name is Will Vick. I'm from NVIDIA. Um, go ahead. And I have, I'm Michael Ballant from NVIDIA as well. Yeah, so what we're going to go through today is really talking about the seven things you need to know or get right when operationalizing AI. And uh, we came to a conclusion, really overestimated this title. <laughs> so you know, it's about 70,000 things you could probably you know, do to operationalize AI. So we wanted to make sure, though, that we cover some of the high-level topics. And this is you know, from what we've seen in the market to, as well, how you go drive this from actually bringing systems up, whether it's on-prem, cloud, hybrid, and how you go drive that from, from that methodology. So the agenda, we're going to go through you know, kind of the problems that we see in the market and you know, within building AI and what we kind of see is some of these remedies that help move some of this traction forward. Um, then why is this happening? You know, what you need, what, what, to, what to do about it, but then as well, how do you do it? Because you break down these four steps and then really you'll get to seven times, you know, 10,000. Uh, but at the end of the day, we just want to make sure you know, that we cover these bases. So some of the problems that we see with building AI. Uh, the, one of the biggest pieces that I see is really just trying to grasp from a high le higher level executive point of view on how things are being delivered. And what we notice is, yeah, it's a machine that's going to be producing money <laughs> for some aspects, right? That's very, very what we see from some executive levels, but it's just more of a joke. But at the end of the day, you know, when you go down and break down what it is, like business leaders think AI is, you know, data and AI, and then you get the value. But we all understand like the process is very much more iterative um, and how you go to, you know, deliver the value to solve the business outcomes you're trying to solve. Um, and so when you go look at what AI actually is, and I've seen this slide, you know, millions of times, so I had to copy it and make an NVIDIA version of it and add a little more detail to it. Um, but there are a lot of constraints, you know, that fall into it, whether it's IT standards, um, data governance is what we see, you know, data sprawl, um, as well as compute sprawl from that, that perspective. And we'll talk a little bit about some things called shadow IT in the further section, you know, where I've seen that being fairly, you know, pervasive. But you know, ethics, transparency, social impact that really do influence the way that you're going to be, you know, developing models and how it's being deployed. And so there's a good article, you know, that was in study that was done by IBM where they were talking about 87% of models don't make it into production. Why is that? A lot of the time, probably the, probably the hardest problem, and then you can tell me if you agree by a show of hands, is getting access to the right data set. You say that? Does anyone have any others that they would bring up as well? And there's quite a few, but it's really how do you get it operationalized? How do you deliver this? Um, you know, the standards and compliance piece, I can see you know, depending on if it's IT and if you're using PII data or how you're leveraging that from that side of the deployment. Is it in the cloud or is it on-prem? How are you managing the expectations of how you're delivering this model and then as well getting the, the value out of it and how are you measuring it today? And how are you mapping that towards what's the strategy from the product side to say within lines of business, are we going to go complete diversification or are we going to be augmenting places within, our, within what we have deployed today to improve that product to create efficiencies or better revenue that can be associated with it? And so there's a great you know, context in this and we go into kind of why we see a lot of models not making it to production. But one of the bigger pieces is kind of shadow IT. And this is you know, a survey we've, we did recently. Um, when I first started in NVIDIA, I went to one of the largest cancer research centers um, in the US. And the first thing I asked was, I was trying to understand what was the number of systems they were using? Where were they? Because I knew they had quite a few. But I noticed that you know, here's like emergency medicine, you know, you know, all these different areas within Within, um, within the, within the um, excuse me, the campus <laughs> of the research center. And really what we noticed is that they really had a data management kind of issue. Um, and really that's a big risk when you're associating that from like personal um, data and being able, being able to keep that safe. And what we noticed is here's a cluster here, here's a cluster here, here's something under a desk that has GPUs in it. Um, you know, and 
I could literally socially engineer myself to go in there and put a USB drive <laughs> or extract the data itself. So really that was part of their biggest you know, issue and they actually looked at collapsing that and kind of creating this you know, center of excellence per se, right? To where they had these shared resources, data was you know, governed in the right you know, methodology and how they're going to deploy it. So kind of meeting these needs that are really you know, key, but we see a lot of people or a lot of companies doing this today. And how do you, you know, help bridge that gap? Because you kind of want to have shareable, reusable code, collaboration amongst lines of business. And that's really kind of where we've seen that separation. So even within you know, different lines of business, different process, um, different you know, uh, funding values associated with it, um, but then as well, many different types of machines, whether it's you know, the cloud, it's not governed you know, from that perspective, it's on-prem, it could be anything from that perspective. It could be under a desk. And so how do you put these puzzle pieces together and how are you driving it? Because at the end of the day, even from an operational point of view and creating standards around these processes and making a, you know, a standard across the entire business is key because you go look at uh, some of the, uh, you, know, you, you create these models and let's say you ship a, you, know, you email a pickle file right, to you know, the DevOps engineer and there's no version control, no data set control. You know, where is this? How do we make this you know, better? Because this guy's like, what is this? I'm not informed of how to go apply this. You know, what is the API that I'm gonna go drive you know, to whatever application is gonna be associated? So that's another piece of it. It's like, how do you make that better, right? And this is where like Domino really does help drive that. The other piece is just the application ecosystem that's out there from an ISV point of view. This slide is like daunting, right? If I look at this, it, it just makes my heart hurt. <laughs> what do I do? What, do I, what tools do I use? What standardization methodologies? And it's really more about like understanding within your company what are those programming skill sets that are driving what you're doing today? What are other new ways, even from how you go deploy it, to kind of bridge that gap? You're really operationalizing, operationalizing um, you know, AI is more of a social collaborative thing versus, you know, here's a set rule of thumb, right? How do we figure out what's best for the business? So even going to, you know, is it on-prem, cloud, hybrid, what do you do, right? What is the best, what's the most efficient way to run this job at the best cost that also is gonna help benefit on the back end? So it's really understanding, you know, what are the pros and cons of each? How do you deliver it? You know, how is this, would hybrid really benefit my company if it makes sense? So. That's where you're kind of going down the path of, you know, what to do about it. You know, how do I start by understanding where these landscapes and where people are, different lines of business within the company, because we know it can be very disparate, you know, pools of storage to, you know, data accesses, which is the number one problem that I've typically seen. And so how do we, you know, work together with our constituents within the company to bridge that gap? So and what, do we, what do we try to do about it? And really, it's, it's different methodologies and it's different for different companies, but at high levels, like creating kind of like chief data science teams that kind of work amongst those teams to understand code standards that are there. And then how do you go drive that? And then collapsing a lot of the, let's say, shadow AI, IT, sprawl and spin because it's really impacting a lot of CapEx, OpEx expenditures that are within the company and affecting the bottom line. Just imagine if you bridge that gap to have better funding to build something that could support the entire company and be able to leverage that, but still have your separate lines of business, your own methodology, but creating standards to support it. So really kind of what we think about is, you know, how do you do this? How do you lower risk? You know, how do you increase, you know, the, you know, the, the, the budget that you can go drive this with, but having the similar process, sharing it and understanding where things are going. Um, and understanding that, you know, I don't have to be an AI first company because then you'll just be stuck doing research all the time, right? It's more about how do I be a business outcome researcher and driving that to drive the business and sustainability. So really kind of creating the standards, building these fundamental policies, you know, define the KPIs that you're gonna go measure against and make sure it's measurable, and you hire the right team and staff, augment staff, depending on how you're trying to do it. Um, I've worked in high performance computing uh, for a while at HPE, and we worked through a lot of the processes um, for high performance computing COEs in the past, 
So like skill sets associated with using Slurm or you know, LSF, or now it's kind of Slurm versus Kubernetes these days. Uh, and what, what do I use from that scheduler and why is that relevant? But at the end of the day, that's you know, where we're trying to help is understand the full scope to help you know, shrink these, you know, the sprawl of spinning across different lines of business to centralize those efforts and just make it a more collaborative piece. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Michael Ballant, you know, who's gonna talk about how to do it and how to drive it. Yeah, so, so hopefully now you have like a picture of what is, um, you know, what are, what are all the problems in terms of, uh, you know, making, uh, addressing this like shadow IT kind of issue, right? Like there's, there's just all of these different organizations, different teams within an organization that we see um, and uh, they're all building essentially their own solutions. Like what we want to move towards is like a centralized pool of resources and centralized uh, software that like you can use that that really addresses all of the different use cases right um, and you know by the way like at Nvidia we suffer from this too like we don't we don't just have like one single solution um, there's lots of different teams using different solutions um, but there definitely is a movement uh, you know towards using uh, certain standardized um, you know uh, clusters and, and standardized software um, and so what we'll, we'll what we'll go through here is really um, how do we build our own uh, infrastructure and give like a, a kind of like a, a, a rubric for like how to think about it, you know, for your own organization. Um, so I think the first thing is to, to think about it uh, in terms of layers, right? Because um, if you're buying into just like one solution, like an appliance or just one set of software, um, it, it, can, it can address like different aspects of these layers, but it's often uh, much better to think to know the layers so that you can actually adapt and be more flexible about uh, plugging in, uh, you know, swapping certain different solutions um, or, uh, you know, migrating from one to another. And so the way that we think about it is really from the bottom up. We start with the, the hardware because, you know, we are uh, NVIDIA. And uh, Will and I have worked um, for a long time on uh, DGX and DGX Superpod, and you know some of our really our like biggest like you know supercomputing uh, uh, systems. Yeah. Um, and what I have here is the infrastructure based off of an on-prem stack like that. But you could think of some of these same considerations for like you know if you're if you're considering cloud or a hybrid kind of model as well. But we start with the. The, the hardware itself, really. Um, and there's a lot of, we'll go through each one of these layers and you know, there's a lot of thought that you put into each layer, essentially. So bottom layer, data center hardware. Uh, if you move up in the stack, uh, you, there are considerations for virtualization, uh, especially if we're thinking about like some sort of, some degree of multi-tenancy or adaptability to uh, run not just like compute workloads, but also uh, you know, graphics or gaming or other types of workloads. Uh, the next layer, layer up is scheduling. So we want essentially to pool our resources and have some sort of scheduler or container orchestrator like Kubernetes, uh, which serves as that in, uh, you know, interface uh, and provides kind of like an, a cluster OS, if you will, um, for us to, to orchestrate work across the cluster. Um, the next layer up is what, what I'm calling here an AI platform, but you could think of that as like MLOps, model ops, uh, Domino would fit into this uh, layer. And then up at the very top, we have our applications. So um, we have uh, uh, NGC, which is like our container registry with um, you know, models, pre-trained models that we provide and um, also some, some helm, helpful helm charts and other things that you can deploy. And this is really, you could think of this as a very top layer that you want to interoperate and work with that AI platform or even uh, layers that are uh, you know, lower in the stack. And then so to round all of this out, especially for an on-prem case, uh, what becomes really important is also the cluster uh, manager. Um, like how are you actually you know, provisioning uh, the OS on all of the, the host systems um, in your cluster? How are you managing firmware upgrades? How are you, uh, you know, monitoring the cluster as a whole, right? Like these, these are actually really important core things, especially as you're scaling to, to many, many systems because you don't want to run around and you know, crash cart and you know, 
uh, try to try to fix systems, uh, you know, like that. So all of all of this is really important to consider. Um, and ideally, you're, you're you're thinking about these layers again in this like agnostic way, where uh, each layer has handoffs to the the next layer. Like think of it as like an API at each layer, basically. Um, so yeah, starting at the at the bottom in a little bit more detail, uh, you know, what at NVIDIA what we have is. DGX and HGX, and these are really our like, you know, supercomputers in a box. This is like uh, what we use for training our, our most demanding deep learning models. Um, and uh, we have architectures where we take these uh, systems and essentially um, put them into a super pod or uh, configuration where we're not just using this, the systems, uh, you know, ad hoc, but we're also uh, putting them together with a, a very uh, uh, performant uh, uh, InfiniBand fabric, right? So as you're adding more systems, if you're training a model, let's say, uh, like, you know, something like GPT-3 or like Nemo Megatron or um, something similar, you, you can actually linearly scale as you add more and more systems. Um, so again, the hardware is super important for this. Like you, you can't really solve, you know, some of these upper level problems just with, with software. That, that's why this is like the first consideration. Um, we have EGX, um, and, and that's more uh, what we call like our certified system. So these are just um, essentially systems where we can uh, provide like a single GPU or you know several GPUs, um, and uh, tend to use these types of systems more for the edge or for inferencing. Um, so you could put these different uh, solutions together to have like a comprehensive type of setup. And then the networking is also really important. Uh, especially as we think through like how to scale up, you know, multi-node type uh, workloads, um, and so we put a lot of thought into, uh, you know, I mean, this is a big reason why Mellanox is part of NVIDIA at this point. Um, there's there's a lot of importance placed on, you know, how do we do the networking and and uh, uh, you know how do we configure everything so that we can do that kind of scaling. Um, so then. The next layer up, and this is, I mean, this is optional, especially for something like DGX. Uh, it comes more into play with something like an EGX type setup for, for inferencing, but uh, virtualization uh, is, is an uh, important consideration. Um, so especially if we're thinking through, like, how do we provide, uh, again, like some sort of multi-tenancy type setup, um, or how do we provide uh, a way to easily uh, switch systems from one purpose to another? Um, you could use it, you could use containers to some degree, but this is just making it uh, overall like a more secure type of, uh, of setup, right? And then uh, the next layer up, um, there's actually two, two slides on this because this is so important, like the, the resource scheduling aspect of things. Um, uh, you know, we, we were just joking about like, uh, you know, Slurm versus Kubernetes and, um, you know, that's, that's really something that we talk a lot about uh, internally at NVIDIA. There's like holy wars fought over this uh, topic um, because it's so important, right? Um, and uh, really what you want out of a good scheduler are you know, some of these things I've listed here. Like you want to be able to have multiple queues. You want to be able to uh, support like priorities where like maybe one user or one team has more priority over a another. Um, and they could maybe preempt or like stop a job that's running uh, if they have a higher status and um, uh, fair share scheduling is important, quotas. So like being, being able to uh, say like this user can, can spawn a job that has up to 10 systems and this other user might only have, uh, you know, be able to run on one system at a time. Um, those are super critical. Um, and then thing, it's things like top, topology aware scheduling. So like, does the scheduler have some awareness of the, the hardware topology? Uh, you know, so if you're spawning, uh, you know, if you're spawning a, a multi-node job or you're spawning like a partial node, node job, like are you, put, are you uh, putting it in the right place uh, to get the most out of the, the hardware? Um, and then multi-node jobs, uh, you know, another important consideration like tapping into MPI uh, being able to communicate across hosts, like all of this is, is critical, it's, it's really important. Um, but in this, in this uh, 
in, in this architecture that we'll go through, and we'll go through two example configurations, um, we're really focusing on using Kubernetes. And um, all of the things that I listed previously are things that, or at least most of them, are things that Kubernetes out of the box, its default scheduler, it doesn't have it, right? And this is a well-known uh, you know, issue at this point. There's, there's some in the community trying to address it. There's uh, you know, Volcano, there's um, Armada, there's like, you know, things that you can do to uh, deploy and, and, uh, like an augmented scheduler in, in Kubernetes. Um, but uh, it's, it's important to be aware, like if you're just using stock Kubernetes, you're not getting the kind of batch experience that you'd want. And so you either deploy a custom scheduler or you, deploy, you have to take into consideration that Kubernetes is kind of dumb in a way about its scheduling and you have to implement things at a higher level in that AI platform layer. Uh, for example, the quota, the quotas, like I was mentioning, um, or, or some, some amount of like, you know, topology awareness, et cetera. Um, and what we're also using here, uh, it's important to call out, is um, GP operator and network operator. So these are, uh, you know, essentially uh, operators that we have created at NVIDIA that uh, provide uh, GPU access in the Kubernetes cluster and also uh, uh, NIC pass through. Uh, so if you're running, especially a multi-node job, uh, you'll have uh, each pod that Kubernetes spawns on each system will have all of the uh, the NICs uh, available, so that you're you're communicating effectively in your multi-node job. Um, and then the AI platform layer in this example, we're we're uh, you know focusing on Domino as a uh, solution as a part of this uh, comprehensive uh, stack. Um, really, you could think of uh, you know, providing some interface to the cluster that's a little bit more user-friendly than just spawning you know, jobs in, in, in Kubernetes directly uh, and takes advantage, uh, it, it, it implements some of these things that are lacking really at the Kubernetes uh, you know, layer, um, like uh, quotas, like I mentioned. Um, and it, it also, it does a lot more, right? Uh, everyone here is probably quite familiar with, with Domino, but just gives like a central hub for folks to log into and, and you know, do their work and retain um, uh, you know, their, their, their workspaces and such. Um, and then the very top layer, and you know, I talked a little bit about this, but like really we focus on providing, th providing useful resources in NGC uh, because we, we do a lot of work, uh, for example, with the deep learning framework containers, uh, like uh, we do a lot, a lot of work with PyTorch and TensorFlow and uh, MXNet and, you know, uh, and we, we, we take those uh, frameworks and we optimize them. Uh, we're, we're not just fixing issues, but actually making sure that they run really well on our hardware. Uh, and so we provide those uh, uh, resources as containers free of charge uh, through NGC. Um, there's also things like Rapids uh, which is our, like you could think of it as more of like our, if you're interested in XGBoost or traditional machine learning, um, it's more uh, in, in that vein of, uh, of a framework uh, in terms of what we provide. Um, and then models and model scripts, like we have a, a huge um, set of resources there that we provide. Um, in, in addition to that, uh, there are industry, I would say like industry or use case specific uh, uh, SDKs that we also provide on NGC. So if you're interested in like conversational AI, we, uh, we have a, a huge research team that focuses just on that and provides uh, Reva uh, for int intelligent video analytics. We have DeepStream for, uh, you know, recommender systems, we have Merlin and then medical imaging. We have a whole suite of tools um, in, in NVIDIA Clara. Um, so strongly encourage you to look at um, NGC. You know, even if you're not trying to build this stack, there's just a, a, a whole wealth of resources and examples and uh, you know, free stuff that you can just take and, and use. Um, and then the last, the last bit is, as I you know, mentioned earlier, cluster management, right? And for that, um, in the stack, uh, what we have is bright computing. And so bright, can be used to manage all of the, the individual systems in the cluster. Can also deploy. It can also be used to deploy uh, Kubernetes uh, to manage firmware updates, especially for DGX. 
um, for uh, monitoring of all of the all of the systems and the state of the the general cluster. So. Super uh, great solution to use uh, here. Also, if you're thinking about hybrid, um, Bright can also be used to manage uh, CSP-based instances as well, all within the same uh, you know, cluster. Yeah. So revisiting the initial layered diagram here, I'm gonna go through two concrete, more, or more concrete examples, right? So um, if we're thinking about like a DJX based AI infrastructure, so I would think of this more as being used for uh, training AI, um, especially in the case of um, going from like experimenting in a Jupyter notebook to maybe running pipelines to multi-node uh, jobs. Uh, this is the, the recommended architecture that uh, I would put together. So starting with DJX or DJX Superpod at the base, Kubernetes with GP operator, network operator, Domino uh, on, deployed on top of Kubernetes, and then tapping into NGC containers, which you can pull into uh, Domino. And then Bright rounds everything out as the uh, cluster manager. And then for an EGX-based uh, AI uh, infrastructure, and I would think of this more in the sense of, uh, you know, having like a kind of like an inference cluster. Um, uh, I would start with something like NVIDIA certified systems, so EGX type systems. Uh, put in a virtualization layer with, uh, you know, VMware vSphere with, with Tanzu, something like that. Um, you, you, could, you, could, you could, of course, just use VMs and then, uh, you know, deploy Kubernetes. But in this case, we're using VMware as kind of also the cluster manager of sorts because we're deploying that virtualization layer. Uh, and then, of course, uh, need GPU operator and network operator and deploying Domino on top and then NGC containers and models. So it's a really, like when you think of, I hope everyone sees like when you break things down this way in terms of the layers, it actually becomes really straightforward and, and, uh, and simple. And each, each layer you could think of substituting with different hardware or different like virtualization solutions or a different scheduler, a different AI platform, different applications, right? And just makes everything way more flexible. So um, hope that makes sense. and. Uh, yeah, if there's any questions, we're happy to, to take them. When's the uh, solution stack paper What's coming that? out? Oh, yeah. And yeah. so both of these uh, examples that I gave, we have, um, you know, uh, what we call solution stacks that, uh, that document the process of deploying these uh, stacks. So they're all, like, tested. Uh, the DGX one uh, is coming out very soon. We, we, just, uh, we just created it, but, like, we're, we're publishing it online probably by early next week. Um, so happy to share that. And the, the EGX uh, side is, is, uh, is also documented and uh, we could share that as well. So.